Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm chatting with Dr. Stephen Terrio from Cytophage. In this interview, we discuss how Forbes recently published an article that said that phage therapy could be the world's next trillion dollar idea. We also discuss how a woman in Ottawa who had a really bad infection after a hip replacement surgery used Cytophage's technology to treat her infection and found a very successful outcome as well as how the company plans to see commercialization in South Asia by the end of 2024. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Dr. Steven, thanks so much for joining us today. Excellent. Thank you for the invitation. I'm always happy to come on the show. So Forbes earlier this year put out a story on phages saying that phages are the next trillion dollar idea in biotech. Do you think that we've reached a point where phage therapy can become mainstream or is there still a lot more research that needs to be done? Well, there's definitely uh, more research, but let me, let me talk about the trillion dollar idea. They're absolutely right. Phages will be the next trillion dollar market for sure. Uh, because again, they're going to be replacing or augmenting antibiotics. Now, there are some stumbling blocks though with a new technology and a new procedure that we definitely have to look at. So I always like to tell people there's five things that are gonna make phages successful. One, we need government regulators to get on board and to understand what phages are, which is slowly happening around the world. You guys, you know, since the last time we even spoke, we've seen advancements in governments actually moving phage therapy forward. We need the buyers to understand that we're anti, we're like, we're not an antibiotic. I always like to tell buyers this simple analogy. I say, listen, when you're using an antibiotic, you're carpet bombing the entire bacterial flora. When you're using a phage, you're more like a sniper or a tactical team. You're actually removing the bad bacteria out of the area. So when you're a buyer and you're actually using antibiotics, you see, you know, them, you see them killing all of the bacteria, but they're also causing a lot of damage to not only the animal that they're treating, but also with antimicrobial resistance downstream. So we have to make the buyers understand that the switchover even though it's not going to be like an antibiotic, it'll be as good as an antibiotic, but not like an antibiotic. Um, it'll be a good transition for them to get away from using something that, again, will harm the population. The third one is funders. Um, you know, investment in this type of research has to be done by all levels. It has to be financial funding. It has to be government funding. And it also has to be academic funded. And what I mean by that is there are many little things that phages and phage research needs to unvelop right now to make them commercial products. And we can do that when we have good funders backing a, backing a technology. Uh, the fourth one for me, public education. We have to teach people what phages are. Like, ah, Steve, you're going to laugh. I think I told you this before. Uh, when I went to the government in 2016 and I told them that I wanted to use bacteriophages to clean surfaces, they looked at me like I was crazy. They said, you're spraying viruses on what? Like they didn't understand how this actually could work and how it could move forward. So the education from that time up until today has been light years ahead, meaning the government now understands what phages are. The population is starting to see the benefit of phages. And again, it's really exciting. And then the last one for me is the science. We need to, be, we need to allow the science to move forward. You know, some things are going to be really beneficial, meaning that we're going to get great results. Um, and sometimes we're going to get bad results because everything that we use is going to be situational. So those are the five things, again, that I think are really important to make this trillion idea an actual reality. And I think we're well on our way there. Since the last time we spoke, you guys had your phages used to help a woman in Ottawa, as I understand it, who was almost going to have her leg amputated. So this is all over the mainstream media, global, CTV, CBC News. Now, I've, I've got to ask, since this story happened, what's the response been like? Yeah, the response has been overwhelming at times. Um, you know, for, for this patient, uh, again, when we treated her, she's again doing quite well. Um, the, the treatment has taken, very, taken on very well and we'll have, you know, full results about the whole process when she goes through all of the evaluation situations that she has to go through with Health Canada. But I am going to say, you know, just on the side that uh, she's doing fabulous. Now, the response though, for me was, again, a bit overwhelming as well as a, a bit telling. Um, I used to get between 10 and 20 uh, requests for phage therapy a month. After this news broke out that we were actually helping people, 
um, you know, stop amputations and save lives, I get between 100 and 200 requests now. And uh, again, it's a little overwhelming in the sense that uh, you can see a real need for a new technology to deal with the issues that we're having with antimicrobial resistance. You can actually see it with the population because they're the ones that are calling me and asking for this type of help. So, um, you know, I, again, like I said, a bit overwhelming, uh, but also, um, you know, helps me understand that what we're doing is actually going to make a difference because uh, people need us. So what's the bigger implications of the story? Now, in, in her case, my understanding is it was a hip replacement infection, which I can't imagine is a huge market. I'm sure it does happen from time to time. But in terms of the overall sort of outcome or uh, I shouldn't say outcome, but the overall implications of what happened, what does it really mean? Yeah. So so there's two fronts. First off, the human side, of course, we always want to help humans. The second side, though, is, you know, there might not be a lot of prosthetic joint infections. So there are actually quite a few. It's quite surprising when you actually think about it. Um, but what we're actually doing is not only are we helping people, but we're also removing that patient from the hospital system. So I'll put it to you this way. If I'm treating with phages, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than doing a full-blown hip replacement surgery. If you look at the cost comparisons. This is why, again, um, pushing in these avenues where we can actually decrease the burden on the hospital system, that's part of what we also want to do. Not only save people's lives and save legs, but also you know, show that using this new technology is helpful in many other aspects as opposed to just saving somebody's life. So you guys also put out news that you're going to expand your commercialization efforts in 2024 in South Asia. Can you give us some color on this? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, we've been working in South Asia for quite a while now, and we found a few tricks that we needed to sort of implement when when using bacteriophages. So, you know, let me let me fill you in a little bit with Bangladesh. So, again, we've been working in Bangladesh uh, and we've been moving our avophage product forward. That avophage product is our flagship product that treats chickens. And when we went into Bangladesh, again, we had great results. We had everything that we need in place to to move forward with a commercial product to treat broiler chickens for salmonella and E. coli. And then we ran into some issues which were country issues, plastic restrictions and a few other restrictions. So what we had to do was create a lyophilized product. Now that lyophilized product is what we call either freeze dried or a pill form. Now, why did we need to do that? Well, we needed to do it so we removed the cold chain, meaning the liquid format or any plastic issues that we would have with the country itself because they have a lot of plastic restrictions. Uh, so for us, uh, we had to jump in the lab, create the new product. We have that new product created, and I'm super happy to say that I am heading to Bangladesh in the middle of August to do our product launch for this particular product. And again, it's Avophage, the same product. It's just in the lyophilized form, meaning that it's a pilled form, which makes it easier for the farmers to use, as well as makes less issues for us actually putting it into the country. Now, that's part of our story in South Asia. The other part is we're actually working with two very large integrators right now in, uh, in, in South Asia. And what I mean by an integrator is these are companies that actually hold all of the mechanisms for the chain for poultry. Now, what I mean by that is they, from the egg all the way to when it goes to your table, this integrator owns all of that aspect, meaning they own everything. So they're very interested in developing systems where we can treat with phages in all aspects of that life cycle for that chicken. So working with these integrators, again, we're, we've signed LOIs and we're developing a statement of work, but they're very interested in using bacteriophages wholly to control and protect their animal populations. So again, we have two really good initiatives moving forward. One that's going to hopefully bring us revenue uh, by the end of the year. The other one, it'll bring us revenue by the end of the year, hopefully as well, but also lay the groundwork that we can do more work with these integrators and again, infuse bacteriophages in those um, areas so we can start saving and, and decreasing bacterial loads. Yeah. So bird flu has also been all over the news. Uh, yeah. And uh, I know that this may or may not be in your wheelhouse. Uh, if the problem continues to spread, is that something that you may spend some time on? Yeah, so so bird flu is a virus, and uh, the th the phages are also viruses. 
So the only way that bacteriophages can help with this type of organism is for us to stimulate the immune system. So, uh, you know, this is another aspect of cytophage that we're actually uh, moving forward on, and it's using phages to create vaccines. Um, is this one going to be one of the vaccines that we create? You know, we've put in some grants around it to see if people are interested in us moving forward with this type of technology. So we'll see. But for cytophage, for us to, you know, throw our dollars into avian flu right now, um, not for us right now. Why? Because it's a little bit early and avian flu, of course, being in cows is going to be an issue, but it's pretty manageable right now. And it's manageable because this flu isn't that contagious. So it, uh, again, is something that can be managed just with biosafety. So uh, for me, again, I, I'm definitely moving cytophage forward in, in developing vaccinations using phage technology. Uh, but for avian flu, I won't do that in, unless it becomes a human issue, meaning uh, starts spreading like COVID. And then, and then I'll just add, Steve, that uh, and then we can create a solution for avian flu fairly quickly. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Um, if I'm an investor watching and I sort of want to evaluate the company moving forward, or I'm just somebody who's following the story, what does the remainder of 2024 look like from a milestone or timeline perspective? Yeah. So uh, again, milestones for us are uh, getting into revenue uh, by the end of the year um, in South Asia. We want to get our statements of work done with those big integrators as well and see what the rest of 2024 and moving into 2025 will be. We're also developing a human program, again, with the, the human treatments that we're doing. We want to make sure that we, you know, don't waste a lot of uh, uh, money and time with developing a human program, but really focus it on uh, being laser, you know, I call it laser focused in the sense that uh, we want to make sure that all of the initiatives that we have in the human aspect are uh, going to build on prosthetic joints as well as our clinical trial. So, you know, for us, it's it's a great it's going to be a great 2024. Um, we have a lot of uh, a lot of things coming in that are finally um, finishing. So, again, with our lyophilized product going into Bangladesh and then with the integrators in South Asia, uh, we're fairly excited that we're going to have a very busy 2024 or end of 2024. Well, Dr. Steven, thanks very much for hopping on here today. I hope we can make it out to see the lab soon. And uh, please keep coming back on here in the future and update us as you continue to execute on your strategy. Excellent. Again, thank you for the invitation. Thanks, Steve. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everyone.